Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being in our life, being with us, and being in us. Hallelujah. Thank you, O God, for the baptism of your glory. Hallelujah. Well, I'm happy that every one of you here tonight, praise God. I don't even want to just stop praying. Just keep going. But, uh, you know, I want to, I want, tonight my goal is to train you to become expert in helping people understand what is the will of God, and especially within the functioning, of, uh, in the realms of functioning of the gifts of the Spirit. I want you to be solid in this thing. I want, I want you to be so rooted, so grounded, and nobody can pull you up, pluck you up. I mean, you know what? If you're just some little old daisy, anybody come pluck you up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But if you're a big old elm tree or oak tree, just forget about it. Ain't nobody moving you. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, you know, I'm... If you have been ordered by God and it's been declared to you by Him that He has purposed something for you to do, that He wants you to do it, then whose fault is it if you're not doing it? Huh, Dave Mongo? Just think about that. I know some of you need some time. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, Rabbi, I tell you. He's ordered and ordained that you prophesy, and if you're not prophesying, it ain't God's fault. It's just your hindrance. He has ordained that these things that belong to the realms of the Holy Ghost, baptism and fire, be continually going on in our life. And if we don't have it, it's because we're not giving place. We're not cooperating with the will of God. And so I want you to just get, at, I want you to get into cooperating with the will of God. And I want to move all the distractions out of the way for you. I want you to understand that baptism of the Holy Ghost is as absolutely clear in, in the scripture as salvation is. As calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and becoming a new creation and being baptized in water the communion table. I mean, baptism in the Holy Ghost is absolutely as clear as any other part of salvation. And I want you to, just be, I want you to be very, very versed in that. And first of all, we open up our Bibles and we just start in Acts chapter 2. And it's always best to just start at the beginning, you know. And Acts chapter 2 is the response to what Jesus said in Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 1 verse 5 it says, Remember John baptized you with water, but you're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. That's the precedence. We set that. And this is the message of Jesus Christ to the church. The book of Acts is about everybody getting saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Saved, hallelujah, born again, baptized in water and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Anybody that's got a problem with that has a problem with the book of Acts. The book of Acts is a general description of the way the church functioned after that Jesus ascended up on high and, and, and gave birth to the church. The church was not born until Jesus, you understand that, the church was not born until Jesus was raised from the dead, ascended up on high, and the very day that the church was born was when? When? Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost is the day of the first fruits, praise God. That's the day the church was born. And then all through, the, all through the book of Acts, we see the general description of the way everything went down in the church. Now, when you go to the epistles, those are specific issues on specific topics that now the Lord is dealing with to the churches and to the individuals in the church. The book of Acts, it's the general description of the program of the gospel. And if somebody says that they want to have a program of the gospel different than the book of Acts, no, thank you. I'm not interested in a different... I do not want a different program than that which Jesus himself modeled. Are you listening to me? Okay, so... Uh, hallelujah. 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 Come on in. And then I'm going to go ahead and start on over. I'm going to start over again. Just come on in. Because I just... Uh, I want everybody... I want everybody to get this. Listen, if God has promised something to you, in fact, he's commanded you to have it. If you don't have it in your life, whose fault is it? God has commanded that you prophesy. God has commanded that you be filled with the Spirit. God has commanded you to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, okay? And if that's not in your life, it's not God's fault. It's your issue. 
you know, if you're not willing to cooperate with God, then, then yeah, you're not going to be continually filled with the Spirit. You're not going to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. But I want you to understand that baptism in the Holy Spirit is as absolutely as much a part of the gospel and as clear in the gospel as being born again and being saved, as being baptized in water, and so is also the, so is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You must understand that the church was born on the day of Pentecost. That's when the church was born. The church did not start until Jesus... Jesus Christ was, was, was crucified, buried, rose from the dead, stood up on high, and poured out the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's when the church was born. That is not debatable. There's nobody who's got some different opinion. That's just the way it is, okay? So I want you to grab a hold of this. If you're, and I'm going to take you to the place tonight that if you're not flowing the gifts of the Spirit, it has nothing to do with God's issue. It's your issue. And I want to get you over your issues after so long a time as this, okay? So... Anybody who wants to understand how the church was set up, you look at how the church program goes in the book of Acts. That is the general program of the church and how it works and how it functions. And what you see from the very beginning is you see people being saved, baptized in water, and baptized in the Holy Ghost without exception. Now, when people want to have something different than the book of Acts, I want nothing to do with it. That, by definition, is heresy. That, by definition, is an occult. That's, I'm not a heresy because I follow the book of Acts. I'm not some kind of a weird person because I follow the book of Acts. I am the right person because I'm doing it the way that God gave the general overview. Here's how the church functions. The epistles are details now about church assembly and individuals. The book of Acts is the general picture. Everybody with me? Yes. Okay, so where do we start? We start in the book of Acts chapter 2, and we begin to understand what it looks like when the church was born, what was the response, and then we see that that's not a one-time event. If you had the book of Acts chapter 2, if you had Acts chapter 2, those events happened, and then it didn't happen after that, then you, maybe somebody might have something to say. But what happened in Acts chapter 2 is repeated over and over and over again, and nothing stopped. It is the will of God, and it is the way that the church is supposed to function, okay? So, when you start in Acts chapter 2, you've got to back up a little bit and you've got to start in Acts 1-5. Jesus said, John baptized you with water. Ah, you're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now, okay? And then he says on, go in verse 8, he said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is to come upon you, okay? So I want you to get this because he's pointing to what's going to happen in Acts chapter 2 and specifically in verse 4. I want you to get, I want you to understand that this is baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire. This is the power that has come upon you so that you will be able to be witnesses unto him and unto to his resurrection. I want you to understand because then you're going to understand the key role that the gift of tongues play as an entrance gift into functioning in all that the Holy Ghost has. And if you do not have that gift, you are on hold. As much as if you didn't have any water to be baptized, you on hold in terms of water baptism. You know, come on. Now listen, you're going to have to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. You'll be saved. He is the Savior. Guess what else he is? He's the baptizer. He is the one who baptizes in the Holy Ghost. This is his ministry. It is his heavenly ministry. It was not his earthly ministry. Jesus never baptized anybody in the Holy Ghost as long as he was walking on this earth in his physical, earthly, natural body, it was not until he ascended up on high. So then we have to help you understand, grab a hold of real quickly, uh, uh, John chapter 7 and verses 37 through 39. If anybody's thirsty, come to me. I will give you to drink. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Holy Ghost, which was not yet given, for he was not yet glorified. Once again, we have a very specific point, pointing a, a very specific Message pointing us to the moment of Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Hey, look at this. Look at this. Look at all of this now. Look at here now. Don't be in the... I don't want you to get off in the hair, see? I don't want you to be some little daisy that somebody can come pluck up. I want you to be a big elm tree, like a big oak tree, and you solid in God. Because I'm telling you, Satan hates the anointing. He does not want any people grabbing a hold of that which Christ Jesus gave to move forward in the realms of the Spirit. And so I want you to grab these things, okay? Because we're talking about a bunch of revivalists right here, trained to be revivalists, turn nations upside down. Amen. And you're not going to do it without the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So also Jesus said in, in like manner in, in Luke chapter 24 and verse 48, he said, go tarry in Jerusalem until you receive the promise of the Father. Hallelujah. <laughs> because he's, once again, he's talking about being endued with power from one high. So... 
Now, when we understand that everything now is focused, all that Jesus said, all these things about the Holy Ghost coming, even John 14, 17, and, that, and, and John 14, uh, 23, and, and John 14, 20. Uh, in that day you should know that I'm in the Father, and that, uh, or that the Father's in me and that I'm in you. In that day that the Holy Ghost comes. The day that the Holy Ghost comes is when He's with you and He's also in you. A day that they were looking forward to. Now understand this. Jesus had given them power and authority against all unclean spirits. They had great power and authority. They had power and authority to raise the dead. They had power and authority over all demon spirits. They did the, they, they, they did the works of Jesus. But He said, you still don't have enough power. You hear what I'm telling you? Yes. You still don't have what you need. You must go and be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And then you will have what you need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to go away, but I'm going to send you another comforter. Now, you're going to have to understand this is the ministry of the Holy Ghost supplied to us as the promise of the Father and administered to us by Jesus Christ himself because he's the baptizer. Who baptized in water in the days just prior to the ministry of Jesus? John, did he baptize in lemon juice? No. Did he baptize in olive oil? No. Did he just sprinkle dirt on people's head and say, just that'll do? No. Did he tell some of you don't need to be baptized in water? Some of you, you do need to be No, he baptized in water and it was water, water. And everybody got the same treatment. And if you went into the water and you didn't get wet, you couldn't say you got baptized right. by John. Yeah. If you say you got baptized and you got wet just like everybody else. And Jesus said, just like John baptized, I'm going to baptize, okay? Remember how John baptized? And Jesus wasn't the only one who said that. Because then we could jump right from what Jesus said in John in Acts 1.5. We could jump right over to Acts 19.3. And he, we, will hear P, we will hear Paul said, remember what was said. John baptized with water, but you're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Well, when he said that, what happened to them? Huh? Did they all get baptized in, 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 uh, in the Holy Ghost and walk around saying, I feel so peaceful. I feel so peaceful. Everything looks different. Oh, the flowers are brighter. Oh, oh, the clouds are more beautiful. The no. They spoke with other tongues. <laughs> Came out. Just like Acts 2, 4. Just like they got the same that Jesus announced in Acts 1, 5, 1, 8. Huh? They received the, that wonderful outpouring of the Holy Ghost, Acts 2, 4. Praise God. Huh? They were gathered together in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. Plugged in tongues of fire came and rested upon each one of them. And they all began to speak with tongues as other tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. Somebody said, oh yeah, I see, you know, I don't believe that it's the same because I didn't see any fire in the place. There was no fire that you I visibly saw at Cornelius' house. And Peter said that it happened the same way to them. And it was no fire in Acts 19 with the disciples from Ephesus. And they said, Holly. Mosiah happened. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's just invisible fire. And when God wants to open up our eyes, we'll see it. I'll tell you right now. Somebody said their tongue set on fire of hell. I had to give you an invitation. Have your tongue set on fire of heaven. You living with your tongue set on fire of hell. All people walking around, all sinners and shamed and God distant and formed from God, entangled with the yoke of bondage. See, the law said you're not good enough. The law said you can't come in here. This is the holies of holies. The law said you can't come into the holy place. The law said you cannot be in the precinct of the priest. The law said you cannot come on this mountain. You're not good enough. And so thus, because of the law, there was always a mitzvah being, being, being done, a pilgrimage being done, that somehow through your attendance of reading the Bible and giving yourself to God, you may attain unto a place of righteousness and acceptance and approval. Paul says, away with that. We may, we may, we've been given a gift of righteousness. We won with him now. Yeah. Hallelujah. People, in understanding these things are so important to us to believe what God has said and obey him instead of allowing lying demon spirits where it's coming out of a preacher's mouth or a devil's mouth to hinder us from what God has called us to be. Did you get that? Yeah. I could repeat it when we start at the beginning. They recorded it, so Hallelujah. You can listen to, listen to it there. Hallelujah. We know by virtue of what the book of Acts said that the wonderful baptism of the Holy Ghost was viewed as in the book of Acts as essential. 
as, as much a part of the gospel as anything else. I, I know what people have done. They've made it non-essential so that some people can feel better about themselves. But in the book of Acts, it is essential. Amen. I'm going to prove it to you. And the, I'm going to just help you understand. Paul, the first thing he said to the disciples at Ephesus is he says, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? First thing he said, he didn't say, he didn't ask them how they've been baptized in water. You know what I'm saying? He didn't ask them, you know, a bunch of other questions that many theological schools would teach you to ask. He said, first, he went right to the thing. Have you been baptized in the Holy Ghost since you believed? They said, we didn't even know about it. They said, well, we were only baptized by John. He said, well, you won't be baptized by the, by the Lord Jesus Christ. And what did he do? What did he do? He laid hands on them. And what happened? What happened? What did they do? What about she did him, What did they do? Cut it down, my Lord. me, I see her What did they do? Huh? What did they do? Come on, what did they do? They all began to speak with this wonderful language of heaven that Satan hates so desperately, that religion hates so desperately, every demon of hell hates so desperately, and if you hate it, you got a devil. Period. You're under the influence of a demon spirit. Period. Period. God's best gift, promise of the Father. God's best gift, promise of the Father. Somebody goes desperately seeking some escape in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and says, do all speak with tongues. Give me a break. Not everybody's heard what the disciples... Some people are just like the disciples at Ephesus. They didn't know there was a Holy Ghost yet. Hallelujah, but we will get to you in a minute. The Holy Ghost, tongues, is by evidence something that God said belongs to every believer and is supposed to be a sign of the believer. Do you know where the scripture is? Just tell me, don't you? You shouldn't have to even have to think about it. Where's the scripture? Mark 16, 17, thank you. These signs shall follow them that believe. My name that cast out devils and speak with new tongues. Now, why don't you know the word? Get the word in you. Because the word will keep you from being a little daisy that somebody can pluck up and turn you an elm tree, a big oak tree, nobody can move you. Hallelujah. And then you go ahead and prosper in God. Are you listening to me? Woo, hallelujah. Come on now. Come on now. Because if you've got some kinds of questions about the Barathesi, you'll never be able to understand the interpretation of it. And God wants, as much as he wants you to speak with these wonderful realms of a Holy Ghost, divine, heavenly utterance, he wants you to be able to interpret also. He does. It's yes. simple. It's so, interpretation is easy. Yes. It's as easy as... Hallelujah. We just got to bust people out of their doubt and unbelief. Listen, you came in here to be full of the Holy Ghost, to be one of God's people, not to be a Buddhist. You want to be a Buddhist, you got to go to the temple down the street. You came in here to be a part of the new covenant, not to be, not to be a Muslim. If you want to be a Muslim, you got to go over across the street. I can't help it that the Baptists hadn't got it yet. They in the, they in the company, but they need to read their Bible and quit editing. Amen. That's for all my Baptist preacher friends. Some of them are my cousins. We've been watching this right now. The bottom line of it is you quit editing the Bible. You start listening to what God has to say and you read it like he said it and you do it what he said to do. Because when God's commanded us to have something, we don't have it. It's not his fault. Hallelujah. It's ours. Amen. There's going to have to be some faith. I mean, when you think about, if I look at all the gifts of the Spirit and I look at relationship gifts, I'm talking about those gifts of the Spirit that develop our intimacy with the Lord. The tongues is one of them. Huh? Build up yourself in your most holy faith. Huh? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Be continually filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourself in Psalms. That's relationship stuff. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? And I will prove to you that when Paul says be filled with the Spirit, he's talking about Acts 2, 4. Paul understood filled with the Spirit, praying in the Spirit, and speaking the Spirit as one thing, and he, made, and he devoted a whole chapter of the Bible to proving it. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. It is not even a question. It is not even debatable. You have to just simply say, if you're, gonna, if you're a Jesuit priest, if you're Episcopalian, Lutheran, Anglican, brethren, Antibaptist of any sort, all you can tell me is that the Bible ceased to express our current salvation. A cessationist. The Bible no longer expresses our current salvation. That it is different now that all those things that you read about passed away in the first century church. And I ask them, please, you, do you believe that every chapter, every, every doctrine has to be confirmed by two or three witnesses? And they'll go, yeah. Would you please give me the two or three witnesses on that? And silence. 
a space of silence comes over the place. And it's for more than an hour. <laughs> and we get, I, 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 but, 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 but. And tell us, imagine they talk about the abuses and the charlatans and all the other. Come on, give me a break. We're not interested in that. Don't change the subject. We're talking about what God did for us and what he wants us to do for him. Yeah. Yeah. He talk, we're talking about what he poured out and what we can receive. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. You've got to have a demon not to want the Holy Ghost. You've got to be demon-possessed not to want the Holy Ghost. Come on! You've got to be demon-possessed not to be able to say Jesus is Lord. If you can't say, oh, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your precious blood that's washed me and cleansed me, I'll cast the devil out of you. Well, it's the same way with the Holy Ghost. You don't like the Holy Ghost. You don't want the Holy Ghost. You are got a devil. D-E-M-O-N, devil. A demon, not a demonstration, but a demon. Are you listening to me? And my demonstration of a demon. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. God has purposed that his gospel be preached with signs and wonders and demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power. The demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power. The demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power on a whole nother level. Somebody said, well, they did miracles in the Old Testament and they didn't speak in tongues. Hello, this is the New Testament. <laughs> new splash memo. That covenant's gone. God got a new one. And he initialized it with the blood of Jesus Christ and began it and started the program with the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Say, say Mark 16, 17. Mark 16, 17. Everybody's supposed to have it. Everybody's supposed to have it. New tongues. New tongues. Tongues that have never been heard before. Tongues that have never been heard before. Hallelujah. How many new languages are being born today and evolved today on the earth? Give me a break. None. Oh, we're developing a new language. Oh, what are you, Star Trek or something? <laughs> Klingon? Are you with me? Come on, people. It's just ridiculous, the arguments that people come up with. It is by virtue of such illogic explanations that they are deceived. Deception has no logic to it. Are you listening to me? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just break the strong. I hate things. I hate anything that hates the Holy Ghost. I get to hate it with a perfect hatred. I hate and despise anything that resists the Holy Ghost. So does Jesus. There's one thing. He said, you, tell, you mess with the Holy Ghost, it will not be forgiven you in this world nor in the world to come. I will not show you any mercy. I will not forgive you. Are you listening to me? I feel the same way. Because my heart's been united with him. I don't even want to be around people who don't like the Holy Ghost. Get away from me. Get away from me. Go. Leave. Out. Huh? Beginning with the devils. And then the people, they can go with the body or without the body. We're hoping they go without the body. You with me? Are you listening? I don't want to know. I have no fellowship. I have no fellowship with anybody who doesn't like the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is the basis for all fellowship. He's come to reveal Jesus. Without him, Jesus is not revealed. He's come to make Jesus known. Without him, Jesus cannot be made known. He's come to work the miracle of salvation. I, I want the Holy Ghost. Without him, Jesus is not revealed, not made known. God Father says he's the most absolute essential. Holy Ghost is some secondary. He's God. He is he's the comforter. He's the other one that has come to lead us and to guide us in all truth. You refuse the Holy Ghost, you refuse salvation. Because you, you can't, there's no other one to lead you into, into, into the truth. There's no other one to reveal Jesus. Man can't make him known. God, the Holy Ghost makes him known. We want, God wants us to get so hooked up with the Holy Ghost that he, all you can see in our life is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sanctification is nothing more than the Holy Ghost empowering us, us being consecrated to allowing the Holy Ghost to reveal Jesus through our life. Us saying, Holy Spirit, I'm going to just do what you do so that Jesus can be revealed in my life. That's Holy Ghost. That's sanctification. Oh. Huh? Hagiosmos, is, which is sanctification, is the Hagios, the Holy. Hallelujah. Hagios Numa. It's Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Holiness. Halabakataranea. It was poured out upon us. Sent to us as a special gift from the Father, promise of the Father. You got that? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So on the book of Acts chapter 2, that what happened was the promise of the Father came. The rivers began to flow. Huh? Uh, they were baptized. Somebody said, what's the difference between being baptized and the Holy Ghost and being filled with the Holy Ghost? Nothing. Nothing. Because Jesus said you'd be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And when they were baptized in the Holy Ghost, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. See that? Yeah. Acts 1, 5, 2, 4. Simple, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Real simple. People want to sit around and spin the propeller or something they don't even know anything about. 
Huh? How many people you want somebody to operate on you, open heart surgery, and they've never done any open heart surgery in their life? They just read about it, heard about somebody else doing it. No, thank you. No, thank you. Uh, you let me be your 1,000th operation. Huh? I don't even want to ride a surfboard that somebody shaped the first time. You want to say it? Give me a break. Somebody sit around and try to tell me what baptism in the Holy Ghost is and when tongues are supposed to be being uttered and when they're not supposed to be being uttered. And they never have even for one, they never had a syllable. Yeah. Not interested. Go get so seek God and have some proof that you touched him and that you responded to him. Then come back and tell me what he told you about the word. Amen. Amen. Meanwhile, listen to somebody who's been doing it. Hallelujah. Katarabasikidimandeya. Hallelujah. So, the baptism in the Holy Ghost was essential to start the church. Don't you move. Tarry in Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. Essential. You try to tell me Acts chapter 2 is not essential. To Jesus it was essential. You cannot be my witness. Huh? And if they could not... And they spent three over three years with Jesus. And they were given power and authority, all power and authority against sickness, unclean spirits and sickness and diseases. Then my goodness, what, are, what category are we in? We the ultra essential. <laughs> are you with me? They essential? We ultra essential. It was essential over them. Oh, somebody said, oh, you sound like a Pentecostal Jesus only. I'm not a Pentecostal Jesus only. I am a Pentecostal. <laughs> I am a full gospel. I am part of the assemblies of God. I am, come on, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Hallelujah. I am, a, I am a part of the church of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. Of the now saints. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Ha, ha, ha. Of the saints that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. I can go on. Hallelujah. 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 Now, there is absolutely no reason to believe there is anything different in, in Samaria. Acts chapter 8. Philip went down and preached to Jesus in Samaria, right? And what happened? That devils went out of people. Praise God, the name of Jesus. Devils went out of people. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Unclean spirits departed out of them that had them. And the crippled walk and amen. Those who were, uh, had palsy were, were, were delivered, set free, healed. And the city was filled with joy. Now, none of them had been baptized in the Holy Ghost yet. None of them had received the Holy Ghost. Is that what the Scripture says? Is that what the Scripture says? As at that point, go look at that. Go, uh, that, that said, go look. I'm going to mess up your doctrinal hair here. I'm going to mess up your little old bouffant in Jesus' name. If it ain't straight, if it ain't all, if it ain't all styled by God, it needs to be messed up and you need to start over. Amen. Hallelujah. So just look over here, Acts chapter 8. I'm in love with the Holy Ghost. Me too. Yeah. I am in love with the Holy Ghost. I want to be so sensitive and so yielded to Him yes. that I don't even blink lest He's inspiring it. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I love being filled with Him. I love being led by Him. I love, hallelujah, having Him with me and in me. Come on. Yeah. People need to quit being so defensive about the Holy Ghost. So we look here. Um, so, verse 12, but when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Okay? Then Simon himself was baptized, because I'm going to tell you right now, baptism in water will sort you out. Okay? Didn't sort Simon out, but baptism in the Holy Ghost will really sort you out. Yeah. Huh? Because uh, Simon looks just like, a, like, like he's just as saved and just as much a saint as anybody else. But as soon as the baptism in the Holy Ghost, soon as the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit, as soon as God the Holy Ghost comes to pour out His glory upon men, suddenly anything that's wrong is going to begin to get exposed because the floodlight's now shining and the fire is burning. Hallelujah. Huh? We'll find out that Simon wasn't saved. He did everything. He believed on Jesus, got baptized in water, but he wasn't saved. Uh-oh. <laughs> now, the rest of them were. They were already saved. He's the only one that got sorted out that we know. Everybody else is good because everybody else is going to get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. So somebody said, are you saying that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is essential salvation? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying the baptism of the Holy Ghost is essential. Yes. You hear me? Yeah. 
I did not say the baptism of the Holy Ghost was essential to salvation. I said the baptism of the Holy Ghost was essential. Because God made it essential. That's how he started the church. Can everybody say amen? amen? If you can't say amen, just slap yourself and say, oh, me. Okay? Because you have the right, you have the privilege right now to become, get the knowledge of God. And if you sit there hearing the word of God and can't receive the knowledge of God, something's seriously wrong with you. You need to kind of get a reboot. Okay, so look here now. For, we go verse 15. For who when they were come down, so we, we get... Verse 14, now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. Praise God. Peter and John's got the goods. And who when, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive what? The Holy Ghost. Receive Jesus, baptized in water, hadn't received the Holy Ghost yet. People just need some basic, real, simple teaching on the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the general overview of how things function and how things work in the church as it's outlined and described by the book of Acts. The epistles and writings are for the details of issues associated with the church and with the individuals. The book of Acts is the general description of the order of the church. Hallelujah. And the way the gospel is advanced and nothing's changed. Praise the name of the Lord. They had not, what, ha what happened here? So, and when they were come down, prayed for them for that, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon some of them. A couple of them. Huh? None. 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 Was he not available? Just as available as he is now, just as available as he, he was just as available. It's just that, understand, the ministry of the Holy Ghost, God is showing a unique and a distinct function of it. Hallelujah. So that everybody recognize, I'm going to accept Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm going to accept the Holy Ghost too. Amen. I'm going to accept Jesus' earthly ministry, and I'm going to accept his heavenly ministry. Amen. Earthly ministry, died at Calvary's cross. Went down into hell, shouted to the demons in the spirit and told them to let go. Hallelujah. Earthly minister, come up from the dead, walking around saying, it's me. Hallelujah. Come on. Now, earthly minister, ascended up on high, poured out the Holy Ghost in yeah. fire. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. I mean, everybody witnessed in John. The, he is the one. Every gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, witnesses that, that, that John the Baptist said, he is the one that will baptize in the Holy Ghost in fire. I baptize in water. He baptized in the Holy Ghost. My issue to you, Mr. Episcopalian, is have you been received the Holy Ghost? Have you received the baptismal ministry of Jesus? Have you been baptized by Jesus? Are you going to have part of the gospel or all the gospel? Come on. Oh, salvation is still good, but the baptism of the Holy Ghost isn't good. That is so stupid that, the, that no one should believe that. That doesn't make any sense at all. You can still be saved, but you can't be baptized in the Holy Ghost. This is Jesus' heavenly ministry. Jesus isn't even revealed without the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I've got to break these down. See, the biggest thing that keeps people from flowing in the gifts of the Spirit are strongholds of false doctrine, strongholds of doubt and unbelief. It's the biggest thing, fear. Satan uses that, those strongholds of lies, false doctrine, intimidation to keep you from being able to flow in the realms of the Spirit. God liberate you, you'll be so free of self-consciousness, praise God. How so accepted and beloved, my goodness gracious, hallelujah, you just step right out and begin to do it. Amen. Amen. And so what happened? So then what, we, what, we ha what happened? And, and look at here, verse 18. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered money, saying, Give unto me this power. This is a man who's been beholding power. He didn't say, Philip, give me power so that I can cast out devils. Give me power so that I can deal with uh, those who are crippled and have the palsy. This man was a sorcerer. He knew about power. He knew about unseen power. When, he, when the Holy Ghost was poured out on the churches of the people at Samaria, he just saw power like uh, on a level that he had never saw, and he was offering money. I got to have this at any cost. Some of you would say, well, that sounds like he's really hungry. No, wrong motives. And God, the Holy Ghost, with a discerning of spirits, sorted him out. Many modern day preachers and people might just say, praise God, he's ready to give an offering. Go ahead, put that over there. Come on over here, stand in line. <laughs> How big is that offering going to be anyways? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> huh? 
Listen, I'm telling you right now, Gehazi's leprosy is all over more people than you can imagine. Are you listening to me? I'm telling you the truth. I'm here to tell you the truth. I'm here preaching the word of God to you so you can get liberated, start functioning in signs, wonder, demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power. Start living the life of the ministry of Jesus. Start functioning and flowing in the gifts of the, of the Holy Ghost. Praise the name of Jesus. This is, the, this is where the fun begins. Come on. He told us go raise the dead. You better get busy. You know, be obedient to God. Somebody says, I just want to be obedient to God. Well, then you go cast out devils and raise the dead. You want to be obedient to God? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody that believes in God, the Holy Ghost, come to help us to believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The demonstration of power. Then when we, get to, when we get to Acts chapter 10, you know, and now you got a people that they just ripe. I mean, my goodness. You know, I, I think that, I think actually that Brad and Amy were baptized in the Holy Ghost and started speaking in tongues before they officially said, Jesus, come into my heart. They are very close to the Cornelius experience. <laughs> because that's what happened. They see, God, you pay God the quarter, he's going to get out. Aha. You start telling God he's got to do something one way or the other. I'm going to tell you right now, he's going to find you out. He's going to show you. You don't have to do one thing, something one way or the other. Huh? Because you get to Cornelius' house, they have not said Jesus yet. They haven't said, Lord Jesus, they haven't, you know, done anything like we normally would do it. Right, right, yeah. Come into my heart, wash away my sins. I'll turn my back on sin, fall. All the things that we would normally say, huh? Pentecostal genuflex, Catholic genuflex, all the other ones. Are you with me? Everybody understand? Yes. Amen. I'm making fun of it. Make no mistake. It's about time we get into the ministry of Jesus to the ministry of religion. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't even have faith for them to receive this glorious gift. Huh? He gets here and said, well, I don't know why I'm here. I'm here, but I don't know why I'm here. They said, Cornelius said, well, an angel appeared to me. And, of course, that sparked his interest. So I sent for you. said, you're going to tell us about the, the good news. He, so he began to preach Jesus. He didn't preach long. Huh? He said, he began to say, he, he, here's what he said. God anointed Jesus. Ah, <laughs> with a Holy Ghost and power. Woo! We got the Holy Ghost out there and something starts shaking up right then and there. Holy Ghost and power. Who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil and suddenly, woo, pow, bang, <laughs> overwhelmed. They, what? They all begin to stop They begin to it is not some kind of charismatic exercise. It's a means by which the Holy Ghost who comes and lives on the inside begins to say, hello, I'm here and Jesus is there. Ha, 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 ha. Hello, I'm here and Jesus is exalted above all power. Because it is the witness that he is exalted and glorified. This spake he of the Holy Ghost which was not yet given for he was not yet glorified. But after that he, come on. Huh? And I'm going to get to that part here in just a minute. I'm going to, I'm going to connect John 7, 39 with Acts 2, 33. Okay? And so, and I'm going to do that in a minute. And so here at Cornelius' house, what is, now what does Peter do? Peter goes, the Gentiles received the gift of God. Ah. Oh. Ooh, why don't they teach that in Bible school? Why don't we hook up all the same terms together and get one big picture instead of a little, little, you know, uh, narrow-minded, you know, uh, tunnel vision picture that would just basically serve our own interest. No, they received the gift of God just like we did Amen. on the day of Pentecost. And he's going, how can I refuse them water? To be baptized. Pretty, pretty wild, isn't it? <laughs> Hallelujah. It, when you go and make a study of it in Acts chapter 10, starting about verse 45 and go on to uh, Acts chapter 11, verse 18, you'll see that Peter makes it the proof of salvation for, for the Gentiles. And it's from that that the Pentecostal Jesus only started preaching that baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire with evidence of speaking in tongues, it was actually uh, Bartleman, 
And Bartleman came out of Diseases Street Revival. Bartleman was a glorious anointed man of God. And it was really from that text that the Pentecost of Jesus only apostolic faith movement, which is what, what really, remember John G. Lake? He started the apostolic movement. Huh? Are you listening to me? Great signs and wonders, men of God came out of the Zeus Street Revival. Okay? But, but John G. Lake didn't believe, didn't go where Bartleman went. Understand me. Okay? But uh, certain groups of the apostolic faith movement did go there. And it was from Acts chapter 10 and Acts chapter 11 that they said, now baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking tongues is essential for salvation. Because Peter used it as a proof that the Gentiles were saved. Are you with me? Yes. I don't agree with that. I believe that I have plenty of proofs in the scripture that no, 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 no. No, you can receive salvation just as they did at Samaria before the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Amen. Amen. But I praise God for it. I praise God for uh, Acts chapter 8 in that sense that opens the door for others who have not received the baptism in the Holy Ghost with the evidence speaking tongues because that's our only proof text. Hello. Amen. By and large, from looking at the general description of the way salvation was administered and communicated in the book of Acts, it's it. Hello. Are you listening to me? Yes. And then when you go and you start trying to prove text John chapter 14, I'm telling you right now, Jesus got receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost all integrated with salvation. He does. Yes. Try to prove that Jesus does not make baptism in the Holy Ghost essential to salvation. Try to prove it. Try to prove it. I've tried to prove it. Huh? With the biased. And try to prove it. And you can't prove it. Are you listening yeah. to me? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean... That's why when I get around Pentecostal Jesus only people, I know some wonderful Pentecostal Jesus only preachers, full of Jesus, full of the Holy Ghost, full of power. I don't argue at all. I, you know, I just talk about the Holy Ghost. How I talk about everything we got in common. Because he that hath the Son hath the Father also. Do you with me? Yeah. Does everybody understand me? Yeah. Hallelujah. And I don't, I'm not interested in people sitting around fighting among themselves. I'm interested in you start moving like Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I just quit being a religious idiot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Arguing about stuff you don't even know anything you're talking about. <laughs> Huh? Most people are not like me. They don't spend five, six hours a day in the scripture. There's, most people are not like us. We have, a, we have a group of people who devote ourselves to the word and to prayer. They're not like us. And then they go sit around in front of us and talk ignorance. Huh? You know, come on. Stay, keep quiet. And you look, you'll look smart. <laughs> Look, I'm just, just I hope I'm provoking you to read the Bible. I'm hoping I'm provoking you more. Oh, I read the Bible once. Whoopie doo. I didn't understand a single thing, hardly, that I read, for, that I, you know, read the first time around. Come on, man. You know, talk to me when you're on the hundredth time. And we'll just rejoice in God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because you can, you know, you can read all the way through the whole Bible in 90 days easy, right? Yeah. So if you read through the Bible in 90 days easy, you're through the whole thing in four, four times in one year, right? Right? So it's only going to take you 25 years to get through it 100 times. And we can some rejoice together. Amen. What happens is people quit reading the Bible and go to reading commentaries and go to read the explanation and go reading all these other books that are leading people in off on various tangents and not taking the whole counsel of God. Stop that right now. You're not allowed to read any other books until you read the Bible through. Over and again. That's how the Holy Ghost straightens us out anyways. You read in the Bible, the Holy Ghost reaches up and slaps you and says, quit believing that. Huh? The Holy Ghost reaches out, slaps you, says, quit acting like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Holy Ghost is able to convict you through the Word. We just sit around want to have some passive interaction with God. God's Word. Somebody said, I want to hear the Father speak it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see the Father do it. Read. He'll show you. Yeah. Now, now, now that you've heard Him say it, yeah. amen, yeah. and seen Him do it, now what are you going to do? Yeah, now you don't have no excuse that you're sitting around waiting to see the Father do it. Give me a break. Come on, man. This is too great a stuff. Just sit around and piddle around, uh, piddle away our lives with unbelief and doubt. Let's just do this stuff. Come on. Amen. Amen. And so, just once again, I'm just trying to lay, in, lay a foundation for you here, right? So, I just, I want to go back and connect for you quickly. And, of course, I've already said Acts 19, right? Paul knows what he's talking about. Does Paul know what he's talking about? Yeah. Do you know where the church at Corinth earned, learned all their bad habits? Paul, he started the church. Huh? Who was, what did Paul do? I speak in tongues more than you all. I would that you all spoke with tongues. I speak in tongues with more than you all and forbid no one to speak in tongues. I've never heard any Baptist preacher preach on those three verses of Scripture. 
I've heard you talk about all the rest of the stuff that you don't have a clue what you're saying. Huh? But why don't you just go, see, you don't have a clue. Why don't you just go ahead and preach on those three? I would that you all spoke with tongues. Hallelujah, get that one. Two, <laughs> I speak in tongues more than all of you with your bad habits. You got that one? And three, don't forbid anybody to speak with tongues. Hallelujah. And actually, I can give you seven right there in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, but some of you are just going to have to text me because I want to shake you down while I'm talking to you and to go beyond what I want to say here tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can say you disagree with me, but you cannot say I do not know what I'm talking about. You can say you disagree with me, but you cannot say it's not written in the scripture. Yeah. Now, people that want to, people, if you choose not to believe God, you need to go to another church. And if you're watching me by web, I don't even want to talk to you. I want to know, I don't even be near you. I don't know, I'm trying, I want to be so sensitive to the Holy Ghost, I don't have time to mess around with people that are so foreign to the kingdom of God. And, and, am I making myself clear? Yeah. Okay, very good. I want to become more sensitive to the Holy Ghost. I don't want to question Him more. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I don't want to respond to Him more. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to cross-examine Him. Oh, are you sure? Is it really you? How do I know you're not the devil? <laughs> such doubt and unbelief, such fear and intimidation. You never come, you, you're basically next door to being put into a straight jacket. No, I'm not kidding you. It's, next, it's, just, it's just being ready now to be imbibed by some evil thing. Come on, God is such a good God. This is Father's best stuff. This is Father's best. This is Father's best. He says, he's all excited. I'm going to send him the promise. I'm going to send him the Jesus, I'm going to send him the promise, Father. This is the best thing the Father has. This is what he's been waiting to pour out. This is what all the prophets talked about. This is the glory that should come. This is that great day of a great outpouring. This is that which the prophet Joel spoke of. And he's going on and on. And then it comes and everybody's going, what's that? I don't want that. That's weird. That's why I don't want to be around, around anybody. I don't want to be around anyone who feels that way. Please, get away from me. Do not come near me. And I'm going to tell you right now, Jesus feels the same way. He does feel the same way. Well, I, don't, I don't particularly like what you said. You know, I don't particularly like your response either. So we found something that we can agree on. Hmm? Amen. Amen. I'll tell you right now, we love you, we love you, but we're going to go with the Holy Ghost. Bye. <laughs> we love you, but we're going with Jesus. See you later. Alligator. And in the fullness of the word. Are you with me? Are you with me? Snake-like thing, you know. Reptile. Demon thing. Man, this is good. Praise God. I hear all heaven rejoicing right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you right now, I always like to see Father on the full, front row in my meetings. I'm telling you right now, he's always, he's standing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Kapara <laughs> Amen. John chapter, John chapter 7, verse 39. This spake he of the Holy Ghost, which they that believe should receive... For the Holy Ghost was not yet given. We have many, I'm going to just stop and say this. We have many proof texts that show and prove that the Spirit, one word Spirit, Pneuma, is actually the same or equivalent to the Holy Ghost. This is one of the proof texts. This spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given. See that, the equivalence? Okay, good. Glad we don't have to break that down anymore. Praise God. Hallelujah which they should receive, but the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Now turn quickly to Acts chapter 2. Turn quickly to Acts chapter 2 and look with me right here in verse 33. Therefore, hallelujah, being by the right hand of God, exalted and having received 
of the Father, the promise of the Holy Ghost. Hold your hand right there. Hold your hand right there. Go quickly. Go back. We'll just go look at another verse of Scripture similar to John 7, 39. Go look at Luke 24, 48 real quickly. Just go look at Luke 24, 48. Okay? Verse 49, forgive me. Luke 24, 49. And behold, I send you the promise of my Father... I send the promise of my Father upon you. Go tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with, endued with power from on high. Now what the Peter is going to do is he's going to bring both of those verses of Scripture. Okay? He's going to bring, he's going to bring John 7, 39. And he's going to bring Luke 24, 49 together in one verse of Scripture. Hallelujah. In Acts 2, 33. Look at it. He says, Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted... That exalted, that is what? That is John 7, 39, 38 and 39. And having received the Father, the, having received of the Father the promise, Luke 24, 49, okay, the promise of the Father, of the Holy Ghost, has poured forth that which you see and hear. What were they seeing and hearing? They were seeing them all speaking with other tongues, huh? And and saying they look drunk. Peter is giving an explanation for these guys who have just been baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues, who have now staggered out into the street. They've been locked up. They've been on lockdown until the Holy Ghost came. Hallelujah. Now, hallelujah. Now they're staggering out in the street. Everybody's looking at them and going, this is a strange thing. This is a strange sign. Look, these men, it's only the ninth hour of the day. They must be drunk. Listen to what they're saying. Listen to, the, look at what's going on. And Peter's giving an explanation. Now, what is he saying within the context of this explanation? So now I'm going to expand it a little bit bigger now. Are you with me? Does everybody, have I lost anyone yet? Praise God. Now I'm going to expand a little bit bigger. So now he's going to say he's going to exegete this thing, okay? And he's going to say this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out the Holy Ghost on some people. On just a denomination. No. On a few who will receive. Because we know not all speak with tongues. No. You better define 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 31 in light of the big picture and not come up with a contradiction. Otherwise you're blowing it. Yeah. Yeah. The big picture is this is for everyone. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. You will speak with new tongues. That's for everyone. Yeah. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's for everyone. Yeah. Now, if I can begin, to, uh, and, I, and I can take this up, and I can show you yet another dozen verses of Scripture that proves it's for everyone. And I'm going to try to go there. Because I believe that before people can get into an environment where the gifts of the Spirit flow freely, everybody's got to be in agreement with the Holy Spirit. If there's people sitting there with some critical look and critical eye, it becomes Nazareth. It messes the whole flow of the thing up. Wigglesworth used to say that when he got, of all the places that he would go and minister, when he got to Angela's Temple there that Amos Simple McPherson had it up in Los Angeles, he had the greatest miracles. Why? They had an environment where everybody that was there were captivated by gifts of healing because, and miracles and signs and wonders because that's what the whole ministry was about. So he could step in there and he didn't have to battle with a bunch of heads, a bunch of men, religious ideas, Fighting God the Holy Ghost. Resisting the Holy Ghost. That's where we end up, people, with our own ideas, our religious nonsense, our, our, our small scope of reality. We end up thinking that we're doing God a service. Meanwhile, the whole time, we are fighting the Holy Ghost, resisting Him. P Paul is talking to a bunch of people who know the Word of God really well. And in the end, he said, you, just like our fathers, always resist the Holy Ghost. Because they're sitting there with all their doctrinal opinions and their, and their intellect working against everything God is trying to deliver to them. People are going to have to just get hungry. I mean, when you get hungry, you're going to eat your green beans. 
Huh? When you get hungry, you're going to, you'll eat some, you'll eat collard. If you get real hungry, you'll eat some stuff I don't even want to talk about. <laughs> Guys tried to tell me today how delicious pigtail was. I said, well, I'm, I'm not trying. Hey, you tried to try and tell me how delicious this thing was and that thing was. And I said, oh, I'm never trying it. I'm not that hungry. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, for the hungry, every bitter thing is sweet. Come on. And I mean, these aren't just bitter things. This isn't no pigtail. This isn't pickles pig feet. This is God, the Holy Ghost, best sweet treasure of heaven that we could ever possibly want. You sit there and thank God. Oh, I just don't think everybody. I, it's, prayer is just not my gifting. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You're not even a believer if you don't have a prayer in your life. Huh? Oh, uh, I'm not very spiritual. You need to repent. People ask me, wear that like a badge of honor. Oh, patience isn't my gifting. Well, you better get a hold of it. And by the way, it's not a gifting. It's a fruit and evidence that God the Holy Ghost moved into your life and that you're walking with him. So you better repent right now. Fall down on your knees and quit being an idiot. Huh? Capital letters. Exclamation marks underlined, highlighted. Are you with me? Come on. I don't have nothing to do. I want you to have nothing to do with that stuff. I'm at war with everything that is at war against God. I am at war with the Antichrist spirit. Jesus is going to kill it. He was manifested to kill it. Did you know that? Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. I'm in league. Huh? I'm at war. I'm strong in strength of the Lord and the power of his might, taking unto myself the whole armor of God, because I'm not just, I'm, I'm in conflict, at, in combat with with spiritual wickedness. Amen. So are you. Come on. The Antichrist spirit wants to stand up against that power of God that has been given to see this world changed. To call in the fire of heaven. Hallelujah. I'm calling in the fire. Giving the coordinates. Calling the fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Longitude, latitude. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blow the thing, Father. Uh, everything. Now, what'd they say? What, it was a broken arrow or something like that? Just bombed the whole place. <laughs> Father, we're calling in the fire. Yeah. Come on, you guys ought to be up out of your seat right now instead of looking. <laughs> Come on, people, man. Get passionate about what's going on in heaven. Because otherwise, I'm going to think that you earthbound. Otherwise, I'm going to think that you've been compromised by the enemy and that you've been sent in to infiltrate us. <laughs> Try to shut down the anointing, huh? And then we're going to have to get the radical out. <laughs> Come on, let me know that you've been born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, and hungry for heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is the gift of tongues for everyone. Is feeling being filled with the Spirit for everyone. It's being baptized in the Holy Ghost for everyone. It's receiving the Holy Ghost for everyone. Of course it is. Hallelujah. Now I want you to just go, I'm going to tie a few more things together and then I'm going to see if we can't move into, a, into another realm. Uh, another realm of manifestation. Because I want to show you I want to show you how easy it is to function in the interpretation of tongues by the Spirit. It's as easy as, to, it's as, easy as moving in the inspiration of tongues. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, if you've been, uh, if you supposedly had the gift of the Holy Ghost, and you've had the gift of the Holy Ghost for 10 years, and you're still going, ah, ba 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 you're stuck. Come over here. Let me hit the machine. <laughs> Uh, bah, 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 bah. They're supposed to go somewhere here, okay? This is supposed to develop. This is supposed to be maturing. Yeah, this is yeah. supposed to be a gateway, an yeah. entryway yeah. into yeah. all the unlimited fullness of God. This yeah. is a place where God the Holy Ghost teaches us things. Remember, I want you to, I want you to, I want you to, I want to make another point of something that I was saying back a, a few minutes ago uh, concerning Acts 2.33. Remember that that was an evidence that Jesus now, that the promise of the Father had come and that Jesus was exalted. So is also all of those things that I've already said, but in addition to that, it is a proclamation, a declaration, an evidence, a witness that Jesus is exalted at the right hand of the Father and is now King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It is. 
is. And it is also the entry gift into all of the dimensions of everything that Father has for us. And I'm going to go into that here in just a little bit. But I, just want to, I want to lay out just a couple more things and foundationally for you just to see so you can see a little bit more of the connectivity of, of the act, uh, an activity of the Holy Ghost that exists in many verses of Scripture that sometimes go un, that goes unnoticed, okay? So when we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, something most important, let me just say, a chief theme of Acts chapter 14 is that the gift of tongues, the gift of the language of the Spirit, is supposed to mature you. It's supposed to build you up. It's supposed to edify you. And it's supposed to mature into other things. It's supposed to excel. Okay? So, you know, there, there's many things that I could say about the gift of the Holy Ghost. But I want, you just, I want you to just hold on to that for right now, okay? About the carosto breve de cantarama, building you up. Listen, I, let me just say this. If there, I was, because I said it a few minutes ago. It, there, are, there are those, there are a few gifts of the Spirit that really are about this interrelationship with us and Christ Jesus, us and the Holy Ghost. And one of them, one of them is the gift of the language. Huh? The tongues, the interaction with the Holy Spirit, the testimony that He's come into us. Okay, listen to this. Listen to this. On the first Pentecost, God spoke audibly with an audible voice on, from Mount Sinai, Exodus chapter 19. And they heard God speak audibly. That's, now, when the, when the day of, and, and He spoke out of the midst of the fire. Okay? Now, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, hallelujah. <laughs> when the basta rebeta and the fire distilled down into our lives, now, praise God, here's the voice of God coming forth from his temple, coming forth from our bellies, out of our bellies, out of our belly, out of our innermost being, comes forth the very life and river, unexpressible, unlimited, hallelujah, Un without, the, you know, any, any, any limitations right out of our innermost being. Woo! Hallelujah. You, you start talking about this, and you get used to talking about this, you'll lose the English language. You won't even be able to sp hardly speak in English. Just talking about this wonderful treasure of heaven, this wonderful glory, and this wonderful gift that has been given. And so tongues is one of them. Gift of faith is one of them. Did you know that? Yeah. See, God said, so that's why Peter, that's why Jude said, build up your whole self in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. He's got a definition of praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost is because it has already been, the presence has already been set. Even as the gift of God is already, presence has been set with respect to it being, that gift being related to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Christ Jesus, the baptizer, giving to us, pouring out upon us the promise of the Father. With the Holy Spirit in us and with us, it being in that day. That is the day that the Stokorabia, the Takasimanaha, the Comforter comes and the Holy Ghost begins to witness that He is in our life, that Christ Jesus is exalted, that His sacrifice was, paid, was, was acceptable unto the Father. He, he had delivered us, led captivity captive, gave gifts unto men. He has been exalted and that we have been made holy and acceptable unto him as his temples in which the Holy Ghost now dwells. Hallelujah. The witness, the witness, the witness, the first witness. So you build up yourself in most holy faith. What is building yourself up? What is that? Strengthening yourself. That's one of the things that's going to be a highlight of what Paul's going to say about the operation of the gift of the language in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. It's one of the chief themes of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that, it, that you're edified, you're built up by the gift of the Holy Ghost, that the, in the, the gift of the Holy Ghost is supposed to excel, mature you into other dimensions and expressions of the power of God. So what I want to, are the gifts of God. So that, so it's, and also prophecy. Prophecy. Did you know that anybody received the gift, anybody in the Old Testament, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, you know what they did? Prophecy. prophecy. You know, in the New Testament, any time the Holy Spirit came upon people, what they did? And it began with a new kind of prophecy. It's a new kind of prophecy. It's a new kind of prophecy. Because remember, all, really, if you could hear the tongues, if there, it's like, 
For example, when you look in, at, and, and this is a big subject, so you're just going to have to hang with me, get to listen to the tape again. Listen, in Acts chapter 2, when all of them were speaking, 120 people were all speaking simultaneously, all at one time. Huh? All at one time. You, somebody said, oh, no, they weren't. They were all individually speaking. Logistically, get through 120 people giving a message in tongues. <laughs> while 3,000 people listen in their own 12 different languages. Nonsense. It was a miracle. Hallelujah. 120. They all began to speak with. All began to speak with. They all began to speak with. Uh, suddenly, uh, came and rested upon them. All of them clothed in tongues of fire. Huh, and a rushing mind wind. And they all began to. And they all began to. To say. And one by one. <laughs> so let's get the doctrine right. And they all began. Huh? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Satan doesn't want it happening. The Antichrist spirit doesn't want it happening. And I tell you, religious spirit, Antichrist spirit, or Siamese twins joining at the hips. Huh? They are. Two different heads with the same set of legs. Two upper bodies with the same set of legs. I'm not interested. I'm going with Jesus. I'm going to hang out with Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Amen. They all, and what happened? What happened? They all, what happened? Everyone heard in their own language what they were, just, what was going on. They were declaring the wonderful works of God. Same thing happened at Cornelius' house. Go look at Cornelius' house. They all began to speak with other tongues and magnify God. There was a, the, the, the prophecy, that, that whole part of prophecy that is understood within the framework of worship and speaking to the Father. It's not just the foretelling, a foretelling of things, events to come. It's all also about speaking out by the Spirit of the Son those things in adoration and praise and worship. Jesus said, I'm looking for some, Jesus said, Father's looking for those who will worship him in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 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 Hello. Yeah. Oh, no, it says spirit. Hello, buddy. Spirit, Holy Ghost, equal. I'll prove it to you. Start John 3, 3. We'll work our way through it. Email me. I got some people watching tonight, interesting folks. I'm trying to love them. I love them as God so loved the world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we don't have a real fellowship love yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Jesus said, you keep my Father's commandments, He will love you. Amen. Keep my Father's commandments, He will love you then. Yeah. And that's not in contradiction. It's a difference of God's general love for all humanity and relationship love. God's love that will call and reach out versus His relationship love. Yeah. I'm in a relationship love. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I love the Holy Ghost more than I love people. I have... You, you, you have to understand, some of you look shocked at me. Well, why do you have a problem with me having a, trying to love somebody who is, despises the Holy Ghost? He's my, he's my first love, man. I'm sorry. I, I just have a real hard time getting along with somebody that is going to talk bad about Almighty God. Father, Father that's too. You say, you talk bad about him. I'm not forgiving you in this world nor in the world to come. You say anything bad you want to say about me. Jesus said, and Father too. He feels the same way. You talk bad about the Holy Ghost. We do not like you. <laughs> huh? yeah. We not forgiving you. Come on, let's come on. Yeah. Let's just lay it out here. Yeah. We not hanging out with you. Yeah. And I know fellowship. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Don't be shocked. Oh, we're supposed to love everybody. You're supposed to love everybody. Supposedly. And you don't do a good job of it. <laughs> Even in your own house, some of you. Huh? Start loving the people that are lost. Start loving first of all your, your family. Start loving your pastor that you don't like. Start, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you look here in 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know one of the things about, I'm going to try to get to this. I really want to boast the brain and own the thief die. Hallelujah. Really? I really want to show you guys how easy it is to flow in interpretation in tongues tonight. And I believe that you'll walk out every everybody that listen to me. Yeah. Everybody's hungry. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. No, I know I'm saying everybody who is hungry. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Everybody who is hungry, you're going to walk out of here tonight with the ability 
too slow in interpretation of tongues. Amen. Because the gift is, because the gift is here. <laughs> gift is here. Hallelujah. Because I really need, I need really need people when I when I'm preaching, and I lose the ability to speak the English language. I really need people who can just step up and just tell everybody what I'm saying in the by the Spirit, so I can continue on and I don't have to stand up here for you know. 10, 15 minutes trying to fight to get back into the ability to speak in English to tell you what's all been being said. This is where the fun gets going. This is where the body of Christ starts showing. Ha, hallelujah. Ha. I'm going to tell you, it is the foundation. It is the springboard for greater works. It is. It's the springboard for miracles. It's the springboard for gifts of healing. It's the springboard for revelation. Paul said, if I come speaking with tongues, what shall it profit you? Except for also speak by revelation, by knowledge, by prophecy, and by doctrine, which come forth out of the tongues. Yes. That is the meaning. It's coming forth out of the tongues. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. Ha. Well, 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 who would stay? Peter got his revelation. No one had had the revelation. No one. There is no writings. And I'm telling you right now, no one had the revelation of that which well, was spoken by the prophet Joel in that context until Peter gave it by revelation as a direct result of being baptized in the Holy Ghost with its utterance of tongues. And you can't separate out the two. You can't say, oh, no, he got revelation just because he was baptized in the Holy Ghost. You can't parse that out. They don't, they don't parse. They together. Hallelujah. In a beautiful, sweet symphony of glory. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can have Siamese you, you twins joined at the hips, or you can have a sweet symphony of glory. I'm going with sweet symphony of glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shoo, shoo. Hallelujah. You know, it's who rabatai, pisota. You know, it's beautiful because Paul sets, a, sets up 1 Corinthians chapter 14 saying, he's telling us right at the very beginning, he's telling us to to follow after love or walk in love. Follow love. I mean, it's pursue love. It's the passion to pursue love. Because remember, if you know the love of Christ, if you're going to be yielded to the love of Christ, if you know the love of Christ, you'll step into the fullness of God. Understand? You understand that? Yeah. Do you know that loving, know, knowing the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, is actually to know and believe the love that the Father has for us. For God is love. He that dwells in love dwells in God. Herein is our love made perfect. That that is the... That is a corollary scripture to understanding the love of Christ, which passes knowledge being willing to accept and receive a love that God is giving to us, bathing us in, once again, by the Holy Ghost. Reject the Holy Ghost, you reject the love. Reject the Holy Ghost, you reject Jesus. Yeah. You, huh? yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Oh. Praise God. So, it's very, very important that you understand. Walk in love and what? It's walk in love and be zealous and be passionate. It, you know, it, it, it is it literally, it's more than desire. It is to be zealous. It's to be, it's to be desperate. To be zealous, I've got to have this, I want this. You know, even on the level of coveting, you get to, there's something you get to covet. Prophecy. You get to covet spiritual gifts, you get to covet prophecy. So he says, walk in love and be zealous for, spiritual, for the spiritual. It doesn't actually say spiritual gifts. Gifts is a word that is added on. It's literally a much broader word. It's spiritual. Every dimension of that which belongs to the Holy Ghost. Every dimension of that which belongs to heaven. And so he then takes that subject up with the, as it were, almost like it's the, the initial or the cornerstone dimension of the spiritual. And what does he do? First thing he says, he that speaks in unknown tongues speaks not unto men, but unto God. How be it? He speaks, what? Mysteries in the spirit. Huh? This is, come on, people. It is so, it's, it's so, it's what a privilege. Come on. What a, what a privilege to take that verse of Scripture there in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, and hook it up with Jude chapter 1, verse 21. Build up yourself in your most holy faith, praying the Holy Ghost, keeping yourself in the love of God. Yeah, yeah. Huh? So now he's going to go on and he's going to say, He that speaks in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. Good. Is that bad? <laughs> shame, shame, shame. Building yourself up, talking directly to God in those mysteries. No, he's not, it's not bad. It's not a negative context. Huh? 
And we need to be strengthened, praise God. But, but, but Paul is making, is emphasizing the importance of excelling, not doing away with the entrance gift, tongues, but allowing that wonderful dimension of the Holy Ghost to take you to a whole nother realm of expression, both revelation, both knowledge, the knowledge of God, uh, uh, the, the revelation of God, uh, uh, the doctrines of God, not what you get out of Strong's exhaustive concordance from looking up all the verses of Scripture for one word. Doctrines of God is distilled by this Holy Spirit. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So real quickly, I'm going to show you, there's so many things to say here. It's like I'm editing. Hallelujah. So if you look here, so verse 12 says, even as so much there, even so then, for as much as you are zealous of the spiritual, seek that you may excel, seek, 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 seek or be zealous, desire, Seek, pursue it, that you may excel. Hmm? So here we are, we're desiring the spiritual. Paul is almost like making the spiritual synonymous with just the expression of tongues, but we know it's bigger than that. It ain't, but he, he's actually using that as the foundation, if you understand. Because he's really talking to us about not just staying in a realm where the utterance of the Holy Ghost is in, in that realm that no one else can understand because it's just the language of the Spirit. He's saying, I want you to excel with the language of the Spirit to where that everybody else can understand as well. What's going on? Because Papa just laid something on you. In the context of the church, when that begins to come, there is a place of just getting, here we are, getting ready to go to church. You know, we're getting on our way to, to the meeting. And we begin to build ourselves up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Why? We're just allowing God to just have that much more saturated influence over all of our emotions, all of our passions, all of our thoughts, all of our thinking. Uh, th that which is going on in our life. But reality of it is, it's supposed to be more than just going to church. It's actually supposed to be integrated into every dimension of our lives. Because really, the teacher has come, and we're now following and being led by the teacher, and he is hooked up with us in a most radical way. He hooked up with us by oneness with our spirit. He that's joined unto the Lord is one spirit. So the Holy Ghost, so God gave us a new spirit so that the Holy Spirit could come and integrate with our spirit in oneness. Isn't that radical? Yeah. Ooh, and this is wonderful. Wow. It's wonderful. And, and, and the expression of that, the initial expression of that is this utterance of tongues, this language. And out of that, then, we begin to see the, the development or an excelling into every dimension of spiritual gifts. But, but I don't have time to really lay out all of the proofs on that tonight. What I do want to show you, though, is look at, I want to show you this direct connection. Okay. It's, go ahead, I'll go ahead and read verse 13. Wherefore, let him that speaks in unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Now, verse 14. For if I pray in the unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Now, listen to verse 15, okay? What are we going to do about this then? What are we going to do about this then? Here's what he says. Are we going to all be in a panic? Or are we going to all get all concerned? Are we going to all be all troubled about how we're going to get this organized and now somebody is going to be, it's going to become something that man orchestrates? By no means. This has got to be a Holy Ghost orchestration just like it was in Acts chapter 2 or something different. It's got to be Holy Ghost doing it. It can't be man doing it. Man can't get his hands in it. It's going to mess it all up. Right. What is he doing? He's saying, where's what we're going to do, guys? Here is the order. This is where we're going. This is the general direction we're going to excel here. Okay? We want you guys who have just been recently baptized in the Holy Ghost that don't know how to move in prophecy yet and don't know how to move in interpretation of tongues yet. And you don't know how to move in these other gifts of the Spirit yet. What we want you to do is we want you to be focused on the fact that this is supposed to be excelling. Yes, you're edifying yourself. Yes, you're giving thanks most excellently. But we're going to talk to you now about recognizing that Father is purpose for it now to be expressed in such a ways that everybody else can hear what God's saying. So everybody else can hear what God's saying. Huh? What God is saying. 
Because when is going down, God is speaking. It's a mystery to men. But I'm going to tell you right now, there is something that with an interpretation could be heard and be and understood no matter what it is, whether it's just what you might say, praying in the Spirit or singing in the Spirit. So he says, what are we going to do in view of, I'm trying to help you guys excel and understand that, that, that dimension of the opportunity that is given to you as now you're being built up and strengthened and built up to do what? Flow in the Holy Ghost. Respond to Him and move with Him in all the things that He's come to do in our life, which He's already laid this. He doesn't have to go back and say it again. He's already said it in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11. He said the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is given to every single person. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, working of miracles, gifts of healing, gift of faith, prophecy, tongues, and inter interpretation of tongues. He doesn't have to go back through that. He's simply saying that He's asking us to now excel Understand that tongues and interpretation of tongues is equal to prophecy. So it either needs to be prophecy or it needs to be tongues with interpretation of tongues so everybody can hear what God is saying so everybody can move with the, with the, with the will and mind of the Father. So, but he says, what are we going to do, though? What are we going to do? Because if we're not careful and everybody gets all paralyzed and, and sketchy on this, then, you know, it's going to shut the program down. So what are we going to do? We are going to pray, huh, with the Holy Ghost. Because see, he's already defined what it means to pray with the Spirit. He's already defined up to, this, up to these few verses of Scripture that praying in the Spirit or praying in the Holy Ghost is the utterance of the language. So he says, what are we going to do then? He said, we're going to pray with the Spirit. Spirit. Pray with the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. And we're going to do what? We're going to pray in the understanding also. But the understanding isn't where we shift a gear and now we go, and now this is what I think. Now let me go back to what Holy Ghost thinks. Now here's what I think, okay? That's what Holy Ghost thinks. Now here's what I think. Let me, listen. Let me tell you about what's going on and what I'm thinking. No. So it's praying. It's praying with the understanding of the Spirit. It's the understanding of the Spirit. Everybody can understand. Everybody knows what we're saying. And we're back to praying in the Spirit. Now, no one knows except the people who can hear in the Spirit the interpretation. Hmm? Hallelujah. 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 What are we going to do then? In church. And are we going to start here and work our way down? No. And here? How many sentences do you get? How many seconds do you get? There would be men organized. That would be just awful. No, we got to go back to the context and the precedence. They all began to speak, speak with other tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. Hallelujah. They all began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. Huh? So what are we going to do in the church? We're going to pray in the Spirit. And we're going to pray in the understanding also. We're going to sing in the spirit. And we're going to sing in the understanding also. And, and he goes on to make it very, very clear. He says, he says in verse 16, else then, if you don't do this, else when you shall bless with your spirit. Huh? Are you supposed to be blessing with the spirit in the, in the church? What are you doing when you're blessing with the spirit? Talking to the Father. You're supposed to be doing that in church? If you're blessed with the Spirit, how should they that occupy the room of the unlearned say amen at the giving of thanks, seeing he understanding not what you say? For truly you give thanks well. Everybody supposed to be giving thanks well? God's looking for people to worship him in the Holy Ghost and, and, and truth. Are you listening to me? So what are we going to do? We're going to pray in the Spirit, and we're going to pray with understanding also. We're going to sing in the Spirit, and we're going to sing with understanding also. That's church order. I mean... This may sound self-serving, but it's not meant to be. I've written hundreds of songs. I've, I've written hundreds of songs. I started writing songs when I was 13 years of age. I've written hundreds of songs, written them down on paper. There came a time that I didn't write songs down on paper anymore, got recordings. People just, you know, could listen to it on a recording or whatever. I didn't want to write to say, just down songs anymore. And, by, and the thing about it is, it's, you know, I wrote, wrote some fairly good songs. Up while I was writing them down. But there, there is a place now where we 
on probably every service in this place, there is singing in the spirit and the interpretation of singing spirit. So this isn't kind of, you know, dry labbing for us. This isn't theoretical. This is what's going on all the time in the house. This is where the songs come from. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is where the preaching comes from. Hallelujah. This is where the exhortation comes from. Hallelujah. We want you to be able to understand that there is a place that God will take you in the realms of ministering by the Spirit in the word of knowledge. I have people tell me all the time, listen, I just had asked a question and as soon as I asked the question, you answered it. What is that? That is simply the word of knowledge. I don't have to know that I'm giving the word of knowledge. I'm speaking by the Spirit. I'm I'm exhorting. I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes interpreting tongues. I'm sometimes giving out revelation. And sometimes I'm speaking forth doctrine. And it springboards all out of tongues, just as Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want every one of you to understand how close you are to all of these expressions, and I want you to get past the fear factor. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to understand many more things to say about this, but I do want you to grab a hold of these kinds of principles that when Paul says, for example, and, and I'm just going to try to wrap this up by saying this, when Paul says, for example, in Ephesians 6, 18, praying with all prayer and supplication in the Holy Ghost, he hadn't changed the subject. Because the same one who wrote Ephesians 6.18 also wrote 1 Corinthians chapter 14. He's not going to rechange, he's not changing definitions. He's not saying that praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost in Ephesians 6.18 is different from praying in the Holy Ghost in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Because this, this man knew what he's talking about. This is a man of God declaring to us and distilling out to us very accurate doctrines. So praying with all prayer and supplication in the Holy Ghost. Huh? That, are you with me? Yes. What does that sound like? Huh? It sounds like both tongues and the, it sounds like that which you can understand by the Spirit, tongues, the language of the Spirit, huh? Which is a mystery which no one can understand. The, the understanding is unfruitful. And praying with the understanding by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And tongues always starts. Tongues always start. I have reasons and proofs to establish that uh, the, the early church always started the meeting with the baptism in the Holy Ghost. It, uh, Pentecost was set present, and that's how all the meetings started. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> A baptism of the fire of God. Just like this like happens when people come in here and start gathering for prayer as you did today before this meeting started. Just a And it just begins to go to a whole other level. And then out of that begins to come forth the preaching, the exhortation, the singing. One day the Spirit of the Lord told me, said, I'm, Church, I'm not interested in the singing and the preaching. And I was in, in fact, I think, I believe, I, I mean, Anne can correct me if I'm wrong. She had to scream real loud because she's in Fallbrook watching on, on the web. I was, either in, I, was either, I was either in Zambia, Africa, or I was in Japan. I can't remember. And, and the Spirit of the Lord said to me, just write out, but write out, stick out to my interpretation of tongues. I'm not interested in all the singing and the preaching. I'm interested in you flowing in the Holy Ghost that produces singing and preaching. That's the Word of God. So I prophesied, but then you can go read the Scripture and find out that that is what Father wants. That's the way it's supposed to come. No, no we just want to be religious, have our little daily whatevers, you know. Everybody repeat after me. Little periodicals, huh? Come on, people. I know none of you want that. Get rid of that thing anyways, man. Get the Bible out. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so when Paul says, Paul says, here's what's going to, here's what's going to change things. Not Donald Trump for president. <laughs> he says, here's what's going to change things. Not a new president, not a new pastor, not a new building. He says, redeem the time. Amen. Here's how you can redeem the time. Redeem the time for the day is evil. Do not be a moron. 
No, that's really what it says. It does say that. I just, we're emphasis. I know King James alluded and said, don't be unwise. Okay? But you can, and you could actually translate, don't be a fool. People don't like that. We're going to lay it out there. Don't be void of understanding. Literally, it's a powerful, impactful word. Don't be, you know, brainless or whatever. However we can emphasize this. Don't be a fool. Don't be a moron. Don't be unwise. Whatever makes, makes it, helps you receive it better. But, but be wise. Understanding what is the will of God. You know the will of God is the most important thing that we've got to deal with? Jesus says, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord is coming into the kingdom, but they that do the will of the Father. The will of God is re-emphasized re over and over again. Well, what is the will of God? That you be not drunk with wine, wherein is debauchery. Now, let me just say it this way. That you be not buzzed. California, they have more discernment in the, over there in the highway patrol department than most churches do. They put up a sign that says, if you are driving buzzed, you are driving drunk. Because it's the truth. In fact, the Greek word methe literally means just intoxicated to feel a buzz. And, I, and that's one of the reasons that people have such an affinity towards an antichrist spirit that doesn't want to hear the Holy Ghost and doesn't want to flow in the Holy Ghost because all these people run around buzzed. You know how many people have left this church because I've taken a stand against alcohol? You know how much... I, I have probably received as much persecution for standing against alcohol as I have for praying in the Holy Ghost during the meetings and ha encouraging everybody to pray all at the same time. This is why people don't like me. I'm happy that people don't like me because we're all praying in the Holy Ghost. I say, get louder. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, we're not going back over there. Oh, they're over there at the body place. Ah, they, oh, they bring in all these crazy guys. A guy, Tim Hall, Rodney Howard Brown, and a whole bunch of other people. <laughs> Anybody's got an anointing, we want to come yeah. around. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Time for us in case Hallelujah. And so he says, he says, be filled, be continually filled, be being filled, be continually filled. And we know that it is that continuous action with the Holy Ghost. And what is to be filled with the Holy Ghost? The president has already said you can't change midstream. To be filled with the Holy Ghost is to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You should be baptized in the Holy Ghost not many days from now, now. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. So you'll be baptized, Acts 1, 5. And when, he, when, when, when what he described happened, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. So he said, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Because I think there's a bunch of perplexed people sitting around doing some silly things that has absolutely no sensibility to it when it comes to the Word of God. If they the ones saying that, that those who are being filled with the Holy Ghost according to the Scripture are wrong, when in reality, by proof, they're wrong. They got, what, what, is, what does it look like when they... What does it look like to you Baptist preachers when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, by the way? <laughs> What does it look like? Because you deny, it looks like Acts chapter 2 verse 4. You deny the baptism in Acts. What does it look like? Give me a break. I know you're sitting there silent. You've got nothing to say. <laughs> Except for I don't agree. Well, you can disagree with me, but you know what? I'm right. From a scripture point of view, I'm right. I'm right. You have no other basis by which to define. Huh? These words and these terms. None. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Speak into yourself in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing, and make a melody in your heart unto God. Hallelujah. 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 Pataroso pata. Psalms is prophetic. Psalms is, a, you know, somebody said, oh, yeah, Psalms. We're just open up Psalms 91. Psalms, Psalms 19. <laughs> The fear of the Lord is clean. I mean, that's good. It's a good one. Enduring forever. The testimonies of the Lord are sure and righteous altogether. Moreover, by them are your servants warned. Good song. But that's not spirits. That's not psalms. That's what he's talking about. It's prophetic singing. That's what psalms are. Psalms is a declaration of that 
dimension of the Holy Ghost speaking out that which Father is looking for, those who worship Him. In. Hallelujah. Worship Him in sp by the Holy Ghost and by truth. Spiritual songs. You know what a spiritual song is? Spiritual has already been defined. It's singing in the Spirit. Oh, it's a spiritual song uh, in contrast to a secular. No. No. <laughs> no concepts such as that exist in the Bible. In Paul's writings. See, people forget that the same guy who wrote Ephesians wrote 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Are you with me? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so when we, act, when we begin to recognize that God demands this, this is, this is what he wants. If we don't have it, it's not his fault. If he demands it, then it's right now available so easy. It's right now available so easy. He pour out his spirit upon all flesh. These signs shall follow them that believe, and my name is speak with new tongues. Huh? Build up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. What should we do then? We'll pray in the Spirit and pray with understanding also. I would that all men speak with the tongues. What is that? That's verse 7 or verse 8. Forbid no man to speak in tongues, verse 18. I read other. I speak in tongues more than y'all, verse 18. Forbid no man to speak in tongues, verse what, 31. Close, right? Hallelujah. Whew. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Just, hallelujah. We'll just wait on the Lord here now. Wait on let me say this. I'm Venan Supranthosi. But I see the Kadast. I want to 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 see the Kadast. I The Lord will make us. Listen. The Lord wants to show you how. To be so carried away in the splendor of his glory and his utterances that you don't even, you can't even hardly speak in English. Okay? Some of this was happening. This is what was they had the real thing going on at the Church of Corinth. They were having a hard time getting back to English. Do you know what I mean? Do you experience this? Now, if you don't experience this, we want to show you how. I believe a great model to follow after is first and foremost to follow after the Apostle Paul who spoke in tongues more than everyone. I'm, gonna, I'm going to be able to, I'm working towards that moment in time to see him say, I, I, I beat you. Or we're, we're I'm gonna, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm gonna live longer. I'm gonna probably live longer than Paul, so I'm gonna, you know. <laughs> I've already been at time at task longer than Paul. He, he was such a radical preacher, they didn't let him live very long. You understand that? Yes. He only lived about 30 years after he was introduced to Jesus. And then they killed him. It's too radical. He changed the world. He changed the world. He changed the world. God allowed him to bring down the worship of the goddess Diana that had been, that had, been had preeminence since Nimrod for almost 3,000 years. Huh? God used Paul to bring down the Roman Empire. Come on, man. Subdue nations. Amen. Subdue nations. Yes. To subdue nations. Yes. Alexander the Great sat at the feet of Aristotle to learn how to be demon-possessed. And it was, he was so passionate about his stuff that he conquered the world in three years under the, under the empow empowerment of demon spirits. What happens when we sit at the feet of the Holy Ghost? <laughs> Hallelujah. And become so under the control and leadership and governorship and rulership of the Holy Ghost. Plus, it do nations. Amen. Amen. 
I said, dude, no shit. We'll quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword. Hallelujah. Great signs and wonders. God wants to teach us how to do great signs and wonders. This realm of prayer allows us to begin to interact with the unseen spiritual realm in a dimension that defies description. As you begin to do it, you give free course to the Holy Spirit to develop within you things that, that belong to the realms of His divine power and grace that is impossible to, in any other way, to in any other way. So he said, some of you say, well, I like Eli. I'd love to have been in the school of Elijah. Ah, uh, not me. I'm in the school of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I'd love to have been in the school uh, of Samuel. Not me. I'm in the school of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Samuel would love to have been in my school, our school, Holy Ghost school, yeah. where the Holy Ghost is your personal mentor, yeah. teacher, yeah. speaking, making intercession through you, with you. Lead. Come on. He's looking for some people who will give themselves completely over to him. I want you to say, I want you to understand something tonight. I want to leave you with this. Let God begin to take you into the realms of praying in the Holy Ghost to where I'm talking about it is literally it you can't shut it off and you try to speak in English and it just doesn't come hallelujah. hallelujah and the beautiful thing of it is is the Lord has gifted the church because resident in the church is the gift of tongues did you know that first Corinthians chapter 12 resident in the church gift of tongues hallelujah, hallelujah. and so you can begin to Understand how to participate with that as you're here in the meetings, coming for prayer, being here in the meetings. The gifting is here. It's right here. It's available right now. Hallelujah. And in that, there is just a place where you're, you're, just, you're, just, being, you're just being swept away in the inspirations of God in such a way that your mind really isn't, your thinking, your concern, your interpretations, your understanding isn't really isn't really bogging things down. It isn't, it doesn't capture your attention. And, and I'm still talking about interpretation of time. I'm still talking about interpretation. I'm not making it hard. I'm just giving you a place to flow and practice, okay? Because it really is very, very easy. Interpretation of tongues is very, very easy. And, and, and once again, we're modeling it for you all the time. I don't just say, well, now I, I, don't make a big, I don't make a big fuss out of it. I just I speak with other tongues, and then I interpret, and go back to it, tongues, and then I interpret, and it's just kind of seamless. And I believe that's the way it's supposed to be done. I believe that there was some, you know, there's been some interesting things done in the name of tongues and interpretation of tongues, and I'm not going to speak against anything. I think that everybody's got to start somewhere, okay? But it can just become a flow. And I, I'm going to just say, I want you to understand this. For me, it became such a flow in prayer, in, my, in prayer, just there. Maybe I, maybe I started off all dry and really didn't have a whole lot going on. Maybe I was even tired, got off work, kind of tired, and you just start off, and you just, you know, you're walking around, and you just, maybe it's just kind of like that, huh? You understand? Everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Don't stop there. Don't stop there. Don't even stop there. Wait a minute. 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 Wait a Wait for it to minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a is that as it, as it becomes a thunder in your, in your life, you're in expectation now to begin to speak things out also by the understanding that your understanding will be fruitful. Hmm? Okay, not just by the Spirit, but also by the understanding in the Spirit as well. And then, because, and if, you're, if you don't, I'm, I'm a, I think that people just get locked down in one area and they don't move forward. Now, if you can't, if you try to, you try to begin to say something with the understanding and it won't come out, it's just you're just, just, you can't find English language. Just stay there. Just stay. Waiting for my sister. Waiting for that explosion. Because it's going to come. An explosion of prayer is going to come that is going to be of your understanding also. Okay? Wait. Let it build in your spirit. Uh, and listen. Then watch what will happen. Out of that, it's not just prophecy. It's not just now all of a sudden you finally got hooked up and got some ideas now in prayer. This is Holy Ghost inspiration. 
It literally is the utterances of the Holy Spirit. It is prophecy. And many times it's interpretation of tongues and people don't even know what's going on. They haven't got anybody around them to say that's the interpretation of tongues. Because you, you're going to have to have somebody around you, such as myself, that has the knowledge of interpretation of tongues. Say so you're interpreting tongues. It's just the interpretation of tongues right there. Okay? But if you just give yourself to these things, now, here you are in the church. You get plenty of opportunity. Okay? Because... We're, we're out here, we're singing, we just let this thing go wide open. You don't, you're not, you, we don't got anybody, uh, uh, you don't have anybody changed to a hymn book. Okay? We just open wide up. You, and you're, and we get loud in here. You can, be, you can be going off and nobody even notice. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. And just begin to sing and begin to worship. And recognize, hook up in faith, recognize that what God is doing is he's worshiping. The wonderful works of God are being de declared through your mouth. You may not understand, you may not know it. And now you say, oh God, I want to know it. I want to understand these things too. This Give yourself to them. You'll discover, some of you might be able to relate to this. How, how hard was it for you to step over and to, into the gift of tongues. Some of, it really, some of you, it was really hard, wasn't it? Huh? How many of you, it's just really difficult to step over and get to tongues? Two people. Five people. Do I have another hand? Six, seven, eight, nine. I know there's more people. Okay, because that would be just a challenge. But when you, when you finally stepped over into the gift, it just flows. It's just easy. It's like, where was my point? It was, was my problem, right? This is just too easy, right? So it, is with, so it is with interpretation of tongues. Amen. It's just the same inspiration. Amen. It's just the same inspiration. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you ever noticed that when someone, uh, there's a paravasiyatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatat
from which we begin to hook up with every dimension of the gifts of the Spirit and the fruits of the Spirit. Unlimited, unlimited supply, baptismal measure and baptismal anointing. We know these things. The Word of God revealed them to us and we've experienced them. To step in an unlimited, overwhelming dimension of the love of God. Maybe just having, maybe you wake up, you're tired, you only slept three hours, huh? You've been running really hard. You've got a lot of things to get done. You're a bit overwhelmed. You, first thing you've seen was five bills on the table, huh? But you go to the statal on the Because that's going to, all that stuff, that's going to take you somewhere, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. Five bills on the table, three hours of sleep, got a lot of things to get done, huh? Right? Somebody just shot the dog, whatever. You know, just all these things are piling up on you, right? That will take you somewhere. That will lead you right in the direction. But it used to cut on a mamba da 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 pa la da ya. You saw the sepher and ya pa shiki and ya pa ha. Holo si fi da 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 ba la maso surra. Ina mena inka dama yuta ba shi amane ya da da amane. Anda da da beti yuta da munta pa ya. Yara si tanda la la ba kashi anda la mampo tampe. Mananda da 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 ki ni ashala mampa da 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 ya shi laka. Ni ra sanda la mampo kuti ya pa. Holy spara ni ya shi kana da la mohra balia. Mananda da 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 ki ya shala la mahanda la da da here. Bo satare. And you just begin to talk to the Holy Spirit. And you say, Holy Spirit, I want you to take hold of me. I want you to lead me. I want you to feel me. And you just stay right there. Man, you don't even have to say anything. You just stay right there. You stay right there till it becomes thunderous. You stay right there till you begin to become overwhelmed. I'm telling you, it won't take long. You'll get expert at this. It won't take you 30 minutes, an hour, four or five hours of prayer. It, you'll step right into that realm of, of glory in five minutes. And then you won't want to even stop. You won't be watching the clock while you pray anymore. It's like, where did the time go? Hallelujah. The, you've got to be willing to make the transitions. Hallelujah. Now, Hallelujah. Tonight you're walking out of here with an understanding and a sensitivity to the things more than ever before. Some of you for the first time in tongues and interpretation of tongues. I'm telling you, it's on your lips. Yeah. Right there, it's right there with the tongues. And now you're going to be more aware of it than ever before. Yeah. And you're going to begin to function in the gifting of it. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And you must understand that these things are fading away. They're dying in the Pentecostal movement. They literally are. They're fading away. Tongues and interpretation of... Of tongues, if we, things were to continue to go the way that the majority of the Pentecostal movement is, it would be soon not even in existence in the church. You know, it's like the Holy Ghost was persecuted to the back room and now we don't have any room. You know what I'm saying? But you know what? We're not going to stand by and watch that happen. We're going to see a revival. We're going to see, we're going to see a revival. I am so blessed that I got to be raised in the move of the Pentecostal movement, that I got to be raised in t tongues, interpretation and tongues, signs and wonders, the demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power with miracles, signs and wonders. Hallelujah. We're not going to let up and we're not going to let you sit around here and, 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 and not move forward. Understand, I want you to, and this is something else I want to say, this is one last thing then I'm going to let you go. I want you to practice this. When you begin, just, this will help you. And that is that, you know, if, if, if you can, if you can, if when you get ready to start praying, you were not able to, in that, that flow of, wasn't there. Just start asking the Holy Spirit. Don't just start doing something. Okay? Don't just start doing something. Just simply say, Holy Spirit, I yield to you. Holy Spirit, I f Holy Spirit, feel me. Holy Spirit, pray through me. Just stay right there. Until it hits you. Pentecost hits you. Don't try to start off on something. Don't start off. Don't go. Don't. You know what I'm saying. Don't. I ask God the Holy Ghost. It's a dependency. It's a dependency. Ask him. Okay. Now when I'm on the guitar. So it's good to just pray. As long as you can pray in English. Just pray in English. Okay. That's a better way to say it. Than saying praying with understanding. Just pray in English. Hmm. And you're asking, Holy Ghost, feel me. Holy Ghost, pray through me. Holy Ghost, I want to be used by you. I want to speak 
under your inspiration, under your authority. Don't just go off and start charting a course, praying in the English out of your, out of your own knowledge. Are you with me? Yeah. Don't do that. Oh, God, I pray for Uncle Sam. You know he had a headache last night, and he's been real grumpy to Aunt Jane, and, you know, that thing's getting out of hand over there. The dog's mad. The cat's mad. Don't start doing that. Because that would be just as bad as... Okay, so don't do that. Start talking to the Holy Ghost. Let Pentecost come. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? We'll start rich. It'll start rich. Stay with it till it gets richer. And be mindful of letting God and the Holy Ghost begin to say something in English. To say something in English, even as thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for your presence. Understand what this is going to do is it's just going to help you begin to, to participate with God the Holy Ghost in the transition that He wants to help you make between praying by spirit knowledge and praying by understanding, also. Just don't get carried away with it. Let it, it's got to be God the Holy Ghost. I'm just trying to give some of you some tools because I've looked at some of you and you're just stuck. You're stuck. I want to come over there and slap the machine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like the record player, remember? You just kick the thing a little bit and it's back to doing it right. Hallelujah. 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 So, Lord, I, I'm, I'm asking you right now, to cause such an overwhelming glory of your presence to fall upon the people in here that their prayer becomes prophecy. Lord, that they become so given over to your conversation. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost fall upon your people that singing and worshiping takes on the, the nature of prophecy. Hallelujah. Prophecy where you're just prophesying while you sing. It's caught away in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, let our mouths be filled with prophecy. Hallelujah. The Spirit of prophecy. The Spirit of prophecy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Spirit of prophecy. Everybody stand with me. Hallelujah. 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 Just, those of you who are watching on the web right now, just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. It's at the Holy Spirit to baptize you. If you've not been baptized in the Holy Ghost, just go ahead and receive right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for a fiery outpouring of your Holy Ghost through the people of this place. Lord, that your church may begin to sound forth the glory of a rushing mighty wind. Oh God, that your people may begin to speak by your spirit expressly, oh God, those things which you are declaring. Hallelujah. Now, now, now I want you to go over the same thing. I want you to go over the same thing. I prayed in the Holy Ghost until the prophecy came. That was not interpretation of tongues. I can't pray in the Holy Ghost until the prophecy came. I want you to go after it. You start expecting it. God wants you to be zealous for it. He wants you to covet it. He wants you to, he wants you to be giving yourself to it as though you were giving yourself to anything, other, other kind of treasure you wanted to have. Now, if you'll do that, if you will just do what I just did and showed you to do, what you've heard over and again in this place to do, if you will passionately give yourself after this night to it, I promise you, by the Spirit of the Lord, I promise you, 
by the promise of the Most High, by the declaration and the purposes of God for your life, you will step into this kind of expression, both in tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy that springs out of tongues, and also revelation. It's all going to be right there. When you start having one of it, part of it, you're going to have all of it. We are going to see something far greater than what took place at Azusa Street. I'm telling you, we are going to see something far greater than what took place in 1948. We are going to see something far greater than what took place in the 90s. We are going to see the great outpourings of God with a continual increase in the manifestation of the power of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because we are going to give ourselves to this realm. We are going to be zealous of spiritual gifts. We are going to be zealous to prophesy, to move expressly with that which the Holy Ghost is saying and that which the Holy Ghost is doing. These things do not happen by accident. They happen purposefully. Hallelujah. 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 I expect to see in the not too distant future God's people to stand up and begin one after another to give such exhortation, to give such fiery, thunderous prophecy, to give such declaration, to make known by revelation those things which God is saying. And I'm gonna tell you what happens on the foundation of the utterance gifts. All of a sudden, the creative gifts begin to be expressed. God speaks his word, and then the creative gifts, the miracles, the signs, and the creative miracles, I'm telling you, the gift of healing, I'm telling you, the gift of faith springs up out of that declaration, out of those things of the Spirit that the Word of God now speaks expressly through His people. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Now, hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord was just proclaiming into your spirit. These are the things that He's purposed. These are the things that He has decided. These are the things which He wants now. These are the things which He's called for. All you have to do is respond to Him. All you have to do is hook up your faith with Him. And that which God has declared, that which God has purposed, that which God has commanded will come forth for you. He will not force you. You must participate with Him. Handakai in the Hallelujah, 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 Saya busuta yorupoho, saya lalala bokoya, saya lalala basa yalokosa, saya lalala basa suramane naya, saya lalala bokumane, ala bosu sirinahane, ha ha, kaharabeshe. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Sunday, oh, hallelujah. Yes! Lord, we praise you. Lord, we worship. Because I am a 
Alléluia. Alléluia. Thank you, mighty God. Alléluia. Alléluia. Si carrebaya Romana na na mehida. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> if you need a miracle, receive it right now. If you need healing, receive it right now. If there's sickness in your body, goes from you now in Jesus' name. <laughs> oh, Rubble Sika. I'm going to tell you right, this is how you stay in divine health right over here. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! Sembra Gayorama! Say a little bit of Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! 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 <laughs> 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 Every hindrance has got to go in the name of Jesus. Every hindrance has got to go. Every affliction, every torment has got to go in the name of Jesus. Everything that would stand against you, your purpose in God has got to go in the name of Jesus. Everything that would stand against God's purpose in you has got to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father, we thank you for such a great display of the rivers of divine glory, of rivers of your divine power and presence coming out of your people in this place, a display of the body of Christ as you ordained it, oh God, we pray in Jesus' name. My name and the number Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to just keep going. Some of you are spectating. This is about you going somewhere. Is it about you going somewhere? Hallelujah. You got to stay with it. Let me just say this, because I see some of you sir, shutting down. You'll learn, how to, you'll learn how to have endurance as you give yourself to these things in the spirit on a daily basis because the more you'll stay right here, the deeper you'll go. People just want to get in a prayer line. They want someone who's anointed of the Holy Ghost to lay hands on them so that they can feel the rain from someone else's roof. Huh? So they can feel the glory that comes from someone else's life. Listen, Father has purposed to anoint you with the Holy Ghost even as he has anointed Jesus. He's anointed you together with him. You have to stay with this. You can't just shut down. You're going to have to dance around. You just, you just can't shut down. You can't stop. And, and, and it's not about, it's not, and it shouldn't be a labor and it shouldn't be a force. It should be an inspiration. But I understand this. People have to mature in the inspiration. Hallelujah. And so you give yourself to it and watch what God will do. Amen. I want you to, I want you to find everybody you can. Hug them, bless them. Watch out as you give yourself over to this blessing people, how the anointing just increases and you get drunk in the Holy Ghost if you're not already. Amen. Amen. By the time you hug and bless a dozen people or so in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We love all of you.